Hello everyone, welcome to the afternoon, welcome to Node API development series. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to develop Node.js API with MongoDB and Express Framework. First of all, I want to recommend you to install Node.js on your computer. So if you don't have Node.js, make sure that you install Node.js on your computer. Go to nodejs.org and download Long-Term Support Edition and double click on the files when it's finished download and click next, next, next until it's done. When it's done, you can go to PowerShell to check if it's installed on your computer completely. Okay, you can type node-v. It will show the version that's installed on your computer. All right, this means you have successfully installed Node.js on your computer. Okay, the next step, let's create a new folder over here. I will name it node API and then just drag and drop this folder on Visual Studio Code to open it with Visual Studio Code. All right, the next step, what you have to do is to go to new terminal and then you can type npm init-y to create package.json. You will see package.json over here. All right, let's create new files server.js. This is node.js files because it's JavaScript files. So actually you can run these files with node command. For example, I put console log over here. I type hello. And then I can run these files by type node and then server.js. Okay, server.js is the files name which is over here. I can hit enter, it will show hello over here. You will see hello here. I want to run these files with package.json. So over here, I can put serve. And then I can follow with this command, node server.js. So if I want to run these files, I can type npm run serve. Serve is this command which is specified over here. I can hit enter. It will show hello over here. All right, the next step that we are going to do, we are going to install Express in our projects. Okay, what is Express? Express is Node.js framework, which will help you to create Node application easily. All right, you can go to npmjs.com and then search for Express. You will see the information and the detail about Express framework over here. Or you can go to website expressjs.com and then go to get start and then hello world. You will see the code that they recommend you over here. All right, you can learn from this documentation as well. Let's install Express on our computer. The command that you are going to use is this command, npm i express or npm install express. Paste it over here, install it. After you have installed it, you will see node underscore modules over here. So that means uh, Express framework has been installed in our projects. And when you go to package.json, you will see Express has been included in dependencies over here. So the next step, let's create our Express application or Node.js application. So you can use this code directly over here to create Express application or Node.js application. Okay, let's code it together. Okay, con, first you have to create Express variable and then you have to require the package from Express. So Express over here. Where is this one? This one has been included in here, you will see Express over here. Here. You don't have to know about all the code, but if you know how to use it, it is okay. Okay, the next step, let's create con and app variable. Then we call Express over here. So this structure of code, I get from this documentation, okay? All right, the next step, we just create an app. Okay, app, listen. So we listen to port 3000 
and we put callback function over here and then put console log and what do you want is to show on the command line you can put like node api app is running on port 3000 okay something like this so when you run this application you can type npm run serve see you will see this one node api is running on port 3000 but how can you access this website through your web browser you have to declare route okay let's declare route together you can declare multiple routes on your application for example over here app.get that means get route and then you can put url you can put root directory and then you can access to callback function in callback function you will get two parameter which is request and respond so request is the thing that client send to you respond is what you respond back to the client okay so you can access two parameter right here i'm going to access to rest because i'm going to send something to client okay put send and then what we are going to send hello node api something like this if you access to this one if you access to localhost port 3000 you cannot get anything because you have to stop this terminal press ctrl c and then press y and then run it again npm run serve and if you go back here and you refresh the page you will see hello notes api over here you can use application like postman or insonia to interact with our application as well postman here this application you can download it and install on your computer or you can use insomnia okay download this application go to price and then download now and just download it and install it on your computer i have installed it on my computer okay over here you can type http and then localhost port 3000 and hit enter See, you will see hello node api over here all right the next step i'm going to use git to keep tracking of our code so i recommend you to install git bash on your computer make sure that you install git bash on your computer you can get it from this url download is for window if you use window the installation is pretty simple you just install it and click next 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 until it's done and if you are a window user and if you have installed git already when you make a right click on your computer you will see git bash here over here uh, after you have installed git on your computer i recommend you to stop this terminal Control c then press y and then type git init over here to use git with our projects you will see the color over here has been changed to green and you will see u icon over here so okay right click and new files let's create git ignore over here because we don't want to save everything in git okay let's put git ignore okay and then we want to ignore this folder node module after we ignore it you will see the color over here has changed to gray in, instead of green the next step what we are going to do we are going to type git add to add every files in git and then we have to use git commit to save every files that has been chained or has been added to git add okay we change to we can name we can comment this one m dash m mean comment we can comment is like initial project okay all right we have commit these projects already next we are going to install nodemon i'm going to explain why nodemon is really important for node development over here for example if i want to create another uh, route like a uh, block something like this and if i put here hello block and i save it and if i go back to insomnia 
and I go to route block and I click send I will get nothing because I have to stop my application and run it again every time I make change in the projects I have to stop the application and run it again so this is time consuming so that's why I have to use Notemon to solve this problem let me stop my application and then let's install Notemon npm install Notemon so dash d we install is in dev dependency you can search for nodemon in this website npmjs.com nodemon okay okay this is how you install nodemon you can install it globally or install it in dev dependency okay just hit enter over here and then you go to package.json you will see nodemon over here all right, the next step you have to do, you have to run this application by Notemon. Go over here and over here, I will put dev. I will call Notemon over here. I use Notemon to run server.js for me. Okay, I save it. And then over here, instead of run npm run serve, I just run npm run dev. npm run dev, okay. Over here, if you go back to Insomnia and I click send, I see hello block. And if I make change the files over here, put hello block. My name is Dev Tamin. I save, you will see it's restart due to change. So it's restart the application due to change just for me. And if I go back to Insomnia and I click send, I will see hello blog my name is Dave Tamin so when you use Notemon you don't have to stop your application and run it again when you make a change the next step we are going to learn how to connect our application with database like MongoDB in order to connect our Node.js to MongoDB you need to use the package name Mongoose Let's go to npmjs.com and search for mongoose. Here is the package. Here how you can install it. Just copy it and you have to stop your server and paste this over here. Then let me run npm run dev again. Okay, what is the next step? So you need to use this code to connect to the database. First of all, you to include this one to your project and create a variable mongoose. And then you can use mongoose to connect to MongoDB by using connection string over here. All right, let's go to MongoDB. MongoDB. Okay, let's uh, sign. Right here, I'm going to sign with my account. Okay, let me create new account, submit all policy and click on submit. Okay, what we can do over here, we just build a new application or learn about MongoDB, it's fine. Okay, over here, prefer language, JavaScript, finish. Uh, let's click on I will do this later. And then you just click on build a database and then create free version. Over here, I pick Amazon and Virginia because I live nearby. Custer, you can name it whatever you want. I can name it uh, Deptamine, API, something like this. And then, then click on create. Uh, you can create a new user. Over here, I will create root user or admin and password. You can put whatever you want. Okay, let's create a user. We have a user over here. And then for IP, you can put 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, something like this. Anyone can access for description. You can put whatever you want, description, 
add entry okay and then click finish and close go to database uh, close right now and you have to wait a few minutes until it's finished create a database for you also make sure you check uh, network access over here make sure your IP address is similar to this because we want to access to the database from our local host okay let's go back to database and then you will see something like this and then you click on connect we want to connect it with our application just click over here mongodb support many languages over here we need a driver for node.js and the version it can be 4.1 and then just copy this one and then let's take a look at the code the code that we need is over here we need to create mongoose variable all right let me create con mongoose equal to require mongoose okay and next we just uh, over here we just put mongoose dot connect and inside the parenthesis you put a uh, uri what is uri uri is this one okay just copy it and put this over here okay my username is admin my password is one two three four five six admin and then what else you have to put over here is collection name that you want to create you can put a collection name over here for example i will put uh, node api something like this you can name it whatever you want and what else and after you connect is here we can make a new line i can put then when we connect to the database i want it to show some message on terminal console log connect it to mongo db okay and if there is an error we want to show the error out callback function over here and then just console log error so this error we get from this one okay save it over here authenticate did fail i think i put the wrong password so i'm going to fix it so let me check it out let me go to database access let me edit password over here because i can't remember password exactly okay let me put a new password over here okay let me update user password let me change a password right here if you put a correct password it won't have a problem save we successfully connect to the database you will see the message over here connect to mongodb here okay actually we want our application to connect to the database first before it's running so we can move app.listen over here into uh, then over here okay we save it then you will see that it's connect to the mongodb first I move this up here and then it start our application okay this is the right way to connect to the database you can just remove this one if you don't want it but I'm going to leave it over there and if you don't want it to show mongoose strict Kili option over here you can put it to be false let me show you how to do it you can put this like this mongoose dot set set what strictly just set it to be false save it then you won't see this message okay and you will see only connect to database then node.js application is running on port 3000 all right this is how you connect node.js to mongodb Next step, we are going to create a model for data in database. Previously, we've learned how to connect our application to database like MongoDB. 
Next, we are going to create a data model for database. Let me draw you a picture so you can understand the process easily. Here is our application. Let me draw you here our application. And this is node, right? Node app. Okay, we have database over here, which is like uh, MongoDB. Previously, we learned how to connect our application to the database. Okay, and how about we want to save data in the database? How can we do it? We do it by using model. For example, if I want to save information about product, I create product model here. Yeah. So I can save information about product in database. Here, yeah. this is product information, okay? Product data. And this product data will interact directly with product model via the connection that we've created before. Let's take a look what is inside product model so you can create it easily. For example, here is inside product model. And inside the product model, we have product schema. Okay, product schema. So product schema will determine what kind of data you have in product model. Okay, it's quite complicated right now. Let me show you the code. Okay, let's create a folder over here in our projects. Name is models. Okay, we are going to create models inside model folder. For example, product model.js. Okay. In order to create products model, we need to include mongoose in these files. Require mongoose. Okay. Everything that interact with database, we use mongoose. As I said before, in order to create product model, we need product schema. Let's create product schema variable product schema equal. We call mongoose to create schema. Okay, schema. And then in schema, we will determine each field. Okay. Over here is the objects. For example, if I want the field name, I put name over here and then I put object. So we can determine the data type of this field. I need it to be string and then it's required. So required should be true. And over here, you can put validation message. If user doesn't input a name, so you can show this message, please enter a product name and then we can put another field which is quantity okay type could be number this can be required can be true and default value you can put is as zero or put whatever you want and what else we can do over here? We can put like price, okay? It can be type number, okay? Require should be true. And you can even put like image, okay? Type should be string. And, and require can be false. Okay, uh, we won't put default value over here. And over here, you can put timestamp. So timestamp is used to create two fields, which are created at and updated at. It's used to track when data is saved to the database and when data is modified. Okay, we have schema. Right now, we can create model. Okay, let's create product model. Con product. Okay. And then equal mongoose dot model okay and then we put product over here and we use schema over here okay 
now we have model name product so we can export this out module dot export dot product okay we successfully create product model the next step we are going to use the model that we just create to save data in mongodb when you want to save data into database you have to use data model for example i want to save product data into database i have to use product model previously we've learned how to create product model now i'm going to teach you how to use it for example when a user hit this route let me create a route for saving data into the database okay app method should be post and then when they hit product route i will save data to database okay let's put request and respond over here so we can access the data that they send to us via request over here over here let me console log uh, request.body okay okay let's go to insomnia let me create a new folder over here okay new folder over here and i will name it uh node api let me create a new request over here let's type http localhost port 3000 okay we will hit product okay and this method should be post because we specify method post over here and this is the route that we want to hit which is product over here okay if it sends something over there oh i forgot to put respond we have to respond back respond we can respond uh send and then request dot body okay save for example if i go back and hit again it's respond nothing because we didn't send anything to this url okay let me send something to the route in body over here let's put json over here and then let's create data that we want to send for example name we want to send like soap and quantity should be five and then price should be five and image let me get the image from google let me go to pixel right okay let me find soap over here yeah this image is fine let me let me copy the url open image in new tab let's copy this url okay let's put this over here as string so i put double code over there and let me send oh over here we have to put double code it needs to be double code double code okay let's send again we get nothing because i forgot to use middleware so we have to specify middleware json middleware so our application can understand json so over here i put app dot use so this is how we use middleware so we are going to use express middleware and put this json so right now our application can accept json data type let's go back again and send again see this is what we get okay the next step let's save data that we get from uh, request or get from the clients to the database all right let me remove this uh, let me put try catch okay if there is an error i want to show error console log error dot message okay and then i can respond back with status 500 and json i can put object message and then error message okay and over here i can create a variable con product and then okay over here i will import product model con 
product equal to require okay model and then product model and then over here because we want to save data to database we need to save it through product model okay let's put a weight over here because we interact with database so we should put a weight over there so when we put a weight over here we should put asyncs over here so all right and then we put product we call this product model okay and then we want to create new product in database with request body data okay and we want to respond back with the data that we save into database so we put rest and then status 200 and the data that we want to respond back is product that we save to database okay save okay let's try this thing again let's send it okay you will see we get the new record which is id and created at and updated that this means we successfully saved data into mongodb okay let's go to mongodb and check if the data exists over there okay see you will see the data is over here and is in products and is in node api collection the next step we are going to learn how to fetch or get data from mongodb all right let me save more data into the database for example over here i will save shampoo okay then we send a pull request to our application over here we get shampoo let's add more data to the database for example soy sauce okay let me change the quantity to two and change the price to two and then let me send a post request to our application okay we get more data over here we should have three items in our database all right let's check it together okay i go to refresh over here and then you will see three items over here it should be okay all right let's go back to our application so how can we fetch data from the database or how can we get data from the database? To get data, we use get request over here. So we put app get. So this get is get request and then we put route over here. It should be product. I think we should put s over here and this should have s as well. Okay, and then uh, it should be async callback function because we have to interact with database and then we put request and respond and over here I'm going to use try catch to handle error and over here we respond back error rest dot status 500 and then dot JSON and message is error message error dot message next step we declare variable product okay cons product equal to await because we are going to interact with database so we use await over here to wait for the data from the database then we use product model to access data in the database then we use function find to get all product find with empty curly braces that means it will get all products next we are going to respond these products to clients rest.status 200.json and then we put the product over there over here to json okay this should be all right and then let's test this router together okay let's go back to insomnia over here i'm going to create a new request so i'm going to rename this one to be get all products okay and this one I should rename is to be save a product okay let me go to fetch product or oh, let's go back here let's grab this URL and let's put it over here it should have s at the end okay and then we send to our application all right we get all the products from the database 
And how about we want to get a single product from ID? So we do pretty much the same with get all products, but we have to specify the ID over here. I put app dot get because we are going to use get request and then we uh, put products over here. Then we specify the ID of the product. We put colon and ID. Then we use async because we have to handle something from database and we use request and respond callback function. And then we use try catch to handle error. And we copy respond error over here and put it over here. Okay, the next thing, because both of them is pretty much the same, so we copy the code here and paste it over here. And I'm going to change this to product because we want to find only one product. And instead of find all products in the database, we use find by ID and we put ID over here. So how we get ID from here? From here, we can uh, deconstruct ID from request.param over here, con ID equal to request.params. Okay, and then we drop ID over there to over here. And then we respond back the products when we get to the database to the client. Okay, let's test this route together. Okay, let's go back to Insomnia and let me duplicate this uh, one and then let's change this to fit a uh, products by ID or form ID. Okay, let's create it. Okay, and then let me grab ID from here and put the ID over here in the URL. Okay, and then let's send it. Over here, you will see we get a single product from the database. The next step, we are going to learn how to update or edit data in database. All right, let's go back to code. Okay, let's scroll down. I'm going to create a new route over here. Let me put app dot put. So when you update thing, you have to use a put or patch method. Let me comment over here, update the product, okay? And then the URL that we need, it should be the same URL as fetch a single data, okay? Then we put products and then ID, okay? And then we use async because we have to connect to database. So async is really important in this case. And then use try catch to handle error. Okay, and then we can print out the error. If there is an error, we just respond back message, error dot message. Okay, next we are going to get ID from param. Yeah, get this ID, right? We destructure this ID from request this parameter and dot params. Okay, we get ID now. The next step, we are going to find this ID and update it. Okay, let's put con product. Okay, and then put a wait to access to product model. And then we find an item by ID, uh, find by ID and update. Okay, over here. Then we have to put two parameter. The first one is ID, okay? And the second one is the data that we want to update. We get it from request.body. And this data sent from clients. The next step, we check if product is update or not. If it's not update, okay, not product. Then we return rest status uh, 404. And then we use JSON message and we put object and message and then we put back tick and we find like we cannot find product cannot find any product with id we just return the id this id this case means we cannot find a product to update we cannot find any product in database yeah. if the product is updated successfully, we are going to uh, respond with status 200. And then JSON will return back the product. Okay, sorry. Okay, save it. This should be done. Okay, let's go back to Insomnia. 
we can duplicate this one and change this one to update a product form ID. And over here, we have to send put request instead of get because in our route, we specify put for update data. Let me put body over here. Let me put JSON over here. And then I put object, okay, and code name. I want to change a shampoo to like baby shampoo, okay. How about if I send to the server? It say like products ID cannot find put. Oh, I forgot to put backslash over here. Put backslash and I save it. Okay, let me try it again. Okay, let me send back here. Hmm, why is this an update? Actually, shampoo over here should change to baby shampoo. Okay, let me do it again. Let me send it again. Hmm, it's updated right now. Okay, let me change this one back to shampoo and send. Uh, why is return the own data? And let me check over here and if we back to here and we refresh, you will see that the data in database has been changed to shampoo, but it's returned the own data. Okay, we are going to find product by ID again because we want to get the latest information from the database. Okay, let me create a con variable over here, updated product equal to await, and then product.find by ID, and we pass ID, and this one should be updated product. Okay, save it. Okay, let's go back to Insomnia and update the data again. For example, I submit it and for example, I change this one to baby shampoo and click on send. You see the data updated. All right. And what is the next step? How about if you don't want to use JSON over here? If you want to use like form URL encode and you can put name over here and then put shampoo over here. Let me send here. It doesn't update, you see. Uh, how can we solve this one if we want to use form instead of JSON? So you have to set the middleware over here. You can set middleware app use. And over here, you put express.url encoded and object extended equal to false. You save it. And then go back to insomnia. And if you send it, you will see the data updates from baby shampoo to shampoo. And you can add more field over here. For example, I'm going to add field price. Here is price equal to 10. You will see the price is 10 right now. The next step, we are going to learn how to remove or delete data from database. Over here, I'm going to comment delete a product. And then I call app and then I put delete method okay and then we specify route product and then param id we use asyncs and request respond callback function okay the next thing we do is we use try catch okay and then if there is an error we just respond back error to clients okay then we deconstruct ID from request dot params and then we have to find the ID that we want to delete. We put con product and we use await to wait information from database. Okay, and then we call product model and we find by ID and delete. Okay. Here we have to put ID. Okay, and if there is no product, no product, okay. We return, respond, and with status 404 not found. And then we put JSON and we uh, put object message and then we tell them cannot find any product 
with ID this ID from clients and then if product is successfully deleted we are going to respond back to client with status uh, 200 and then put JSON object and then we just return the product that's be fine okay all right let's go to insomnia all right let's right click over here create new HTTP request I can copy the URL form fetch okay copy it and put it over here for example if you fetch all product over here you will see all product in database okay and if you want to delete uh, delete and if you want to delete soap okay you get grab the IP and you put at the end over here method over here needs to be delete because we have specified uh, delete method over here and let's send it you will see over here it's returned soap to us that means the soap is successfully deleted and if I send a request again you will see it show this message and if you fetch all the product over here you will see only two products in the database all right this is all about this video if you like this video feel free to click like subscribe and comment down below thank you so much for watching